Welcome to Midwest Sportsnet. Hello, I'm Joey McWilliams. On the summit today, I am pleased and privileged to be joined by the head coach of the Lewis volleyball team, Coach Laura Lee Smith. Coach, thank you for taking time with us here today on the summit. And I want to talk about your season right now. The Flyers are seven and three now as you've started GLVC play. You had your first home match this past week, a red out, a win against Quincy, a three set win, and then a four set victory on the road against William Jewell. So let's just start right there into conference play now. How does the team look? Um, actually, they were better this weekend. Uh, the first two weekends, we had preseason tournaments. We were very up and down. And I thought, uh, Quincy, we were exceptionally clean. But, you know, first home opener and first time we've had fans in over two years, <laughs> that all probably played into it, gave us a little bit of advantage. And then um, William Jewell's a little bit long of a travel. It's about eight hours. And uh, I was happy. I thought in that match, uh, we got a little little grittier, which is something that we really need to start honing in on. Coach, I, I agree with you, by the way. I think that home home field, home court advantage is going to be something that we see this year really does make a difference. And, and it's nice to have those fans in the stands again, any way around, home or away. Yes, you can, you can just feel it. I mean, it's a little bit harder to yell to your team because now you got people that you have to yell over. But uh, the girls 100% appreciate it much more than, you know, just dead silence. <laughs> <laughs> well, with the win against William Jewell, a four-set victory there, you had a sophomore that has stepped up, especially in the last four games. Natalie Stefanski, she had 20 kills, did so, hitting 333, and, and wound up getting a double-double on the way as well with uh, 20 kills and 14 digs in that match against the Cardinals. She's, she's an exceptional volleyball player. Like just the game comes to her naturally. And even if you ask her a question, she doesn't always have the answer of why she did something because everything just comes really natural. She's very quiet. Uh, so sometimes I don't think the setters remember that she's out on the court, but mm -hmm. the better and better she plays, the more everybody just realizes that she's, she's a really good go-to. We're getting to visit now with Coach Laura Lee Smith here on the Summit on Midwest Sportsnet. I encourage you, please do subscribe to the channel. We talk a lot of small college sports here. And today it's Division II Volleyball with a coach in her 15th season, Coach Smith. 393 wins in your career. We're headed for 400. I want to talk about that in, in just a moment. But you know, back to what's going on right now, uh, you have so many players that you can get offense from. I mean, so many players that, that can step up for you at any point in time, a fifth year player in Ava Venema, who has been leading the way for you so far this season, 3.97 kills per set. She's doing it, hitting better than 360 on the year. And, and she's someone who also has stepped up this year. Yeah. And I don't think that's easy. Um, I mean, she's been an all American in the past. She's been starting for us for a couple of years. So to continue to improve all the way into your fifth year, sometimes players stall out and she really right now is probably playing the best I've ever seen her play. Uh, she's hitting harder, jumping higher, seeing the block. Uh, she's just, we're really lucky to have her as a fifth year senior. <laughs> That's always nice. And, and the, yeah. these COVID years and, and, you know, of course, medical red shirts kick in in the past, but uh, anymore, it's, it's tough to call players by name. How many years have you been here? Four or five, six, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really hard when you're looking at somebody else's roster, you don't know how they're labeling. I'm like, is she really a sophomore or is she a junior? <laughs> It probably doesn't matter, but I still in my head want to know. <laughs> I, I understand. Well, another player who is labeled on your roster as a sophomore and stepping it up uh, again. I, I, how many players are really stepping it up for you now, at least statistic-wise, for you? And Lauren Stenman, uh, she's uh, listed as a setter, also a right side, too, and, and she can do both. Uh, as She's really coming out, it looks like, into her own as a setter at just less than 10 assists per set, and, and she – got a few kills to to her credit as well already this year yeah she worked her way into starting lineup last year in a 6-2 which means she shared time and this year probably in the beginning we ran the 6-2 a little bit more but she's just gotten more and more confident the girls have you know figured out there's just takes some chemistry when you play with somebody and she's this weekend was probably her best she just she ran an offense she didn't just set the ball and I'm, I'm exceptionally proud of her she's extremely athletic like with a jump and quickness and she's starting to use those things to her advantage coach let me stay there for just a moment on that you know, 15th season with the program obviously you, you've been around for a while and and you know you have to make your plays your offense your defense work with the players with which you have so when you have a player like Stenman, as you said kind of stepping into that role and really making it her own 
Uh, how easy is it to to make a, a shift in philosophy mid season like that? Um, I think in general, I hold out as long as I can to find a starting lineup. Uh, I like players to be given an equal amount as possible, fair share at you know becoming a starter. And then once you settle, it becomes a little bit tougher to break it in. So this is probably later than normal in a year for me finding a starting lineup. But we just we really have two setters. Our other setter is Micah Freppen. She's from Kentucky, and she's really really good too. Um, so either one, you know, could take that step forward. And just right now, it's Lauren. Well, Coach, I mentioned 393 wins, 93 losses. That's I think it, that in and of itself says a lot when you have 300 more wins <laughs> to the ledger there on that side. Headed for win number 400, 15 years of the program. Let's, uh, let's discount just for a moment the COVID year, even though you had still a fantastic season in 2020 with 17 and 2. That can't be discounted. But in the 14 previous years when there was – uh, national playoff in in the NCAA Division II. Your teams made it all 14 years. And 2016 to 2019, 119 wins, right at 30 wins per season, two Final Fours in all of that. Coach, it's it's been a successful career so far there, Lewis. Yeah, I think we recruit that way. We like to recruit players that come from either a high school or a club background that win. When we're talking to the recruits, we kind of you know, not directly asking, do you like to win? Because everybody's going to say, <laughs> yes. but winning is something that you learn. And, you know, we could take a couple and teach them the importance of playing to win. But you really need to have a majority on your team that have already bought into that type of philosophy. So our girls, they they expect to make the playoffs. Uh, we work backwards from where we want to end at the year on all of our goals. And, and we discuss weekly, like, you know, are we achieving those goals? Where do we need to get better in order to reach those goals? And it's it's just something that's grown through the years, and there's been players that have added to it. They've they've taught me how important goals are, and so it just constantly is changing. I understand. Well, coach, the the I talked about the GLVC schedule, Great Lakes Valley Conference uh, slate really is what you're looking at throughout the remainder of the year, with the exception of the Midwest Region crossover. I know that's coming up in in mid October too. That's a big event. Can you talk about both the conference play and then that crossover? Yeah, our conference is probably around maybe the the third toughest in the nation. So we get a good strength of schedule and good competition. This weekend coming up, we have a team that we split with last year. So they gave us one of our two losses. I'm hoping we're fired up for that one. <laughs> uh, the crossover uh, for Division Two, there's eight regions. And in order to make the NCAA tournament, you have to be ranked, you know, top 10, top eight in your region. So the crossover allows our conference to compete directly with the two other conferences that gives you head to head results. So it's there's just a lot of pressure going into that weekend to do well, because it's sometimes your one shot to play across the region and establish right. who you are. I understand. And, and that's something you, you really is unique, it, it seems like, to the Midwest region. Yeah, there's a couple other regions that have tried it, but they just don't have all their conferences on the same page. Some conferences avoid playing the other conferences. We just have a pretty good buy-in from everybody in the region that it's worth it. Well, Friday and Saturday, you all will be playing in front of a home crowd. You get to take on McKendree on Friday and Southern Indiana on Saturday. So, Coach, success to you all. Seven and three on the season right now. But uh, if the history with the program is any indication whatsoever, headed for a lot more wins here in 2021. Thank you so much for taking time with us today. Coach Laura Lee Smith with Lewis. Again, success to you and to the Flyers this season. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. <laughs>